welcome everyone that has joined us. And I know that um, things are a little weird this time. I was certainly hoping to be in New Orleans, you know, standing at the exhibit booth and, and talking with people face to face. And uh, we're just not able to do that this time. So uh, I want to treat this as a uh, as though we were doing that. And I um, guess what I'm trying to do is arrange my window so that if somebody, I'm still trying to treat this as a conversation and not um, as a presentation, but right now I'm, I'm fooling around trying to get to the chat box, which I don't see. So I, I will just say, um, Bizod or, or Fabio, if somebody has a question, then uh, just interrupt me uh, because I do want to treat this as a conversation. All right. But, uh, uh, but, but my experience has been unique in that uh, I've, I've been with the, a user of the methods in the highway capacity manual, primarily through the highway capacity software, software uh, since it was developed. And uh, the HCS actually first came out in the late 1980s and was distributed on a single uh, five and a quarter inch floppy disk, which some people probably have no idea even what that is. But um, when the, it was based on the 1985 Highway Capacity Manual and basically implemented those methods in software. And that was the first time that, that we'd ever done that. Um, this is uh, not, not long after McTran the University of Florida received a, a three year grant to develop the McTrans Center and to distribute and support transportation software. So um, obviously McTrans is still around and uh, has been quite successful. So the whole experiment was a success, but that was really the beginning of the HCS. Um, I've been a long time user of it, but also uh, as a consultant where I spent 30 years of my career, uh, I was a, a user of simulation as well. And somewhere along the way, uh, was introduced to Transmodeler and used it for many years uh, and to the point where I decided to make a change and went to work for Caliper, uh, which is a developer of Transmodeler. So I, I really, uh, my perspective is unique in that it comes from, from both sides of, uh, of the fence, if you will. Uh, of course, as far as the highway capacity manual goes, we're now in, in the sixth edition, which is the most current. And we changed uh, the naming of that to get away from the year and go with uh, the edition number. And uh, you're going to see the big reason for that probably within the next year to 18 months, we're going to have an HCM 6.1 that will include some, uh, some changes, some additional materials, and will be electronic. So uh, that was one reason uh, for that change. But uh, within the HCM, chapter six is dedicated to alternative tools. And they're defined as procedures outside of the, the HCM that may be used to compute these uh, transportation performance measures for analysis and decision making. Uh, they can be uh, alternative tools is a very generic term and really can uh, mean a number of different things. It can be from something very simple, a single equation with one uh, measure of effectiveness all the way to a complex uh, micro simulation traffic model. So alternative tools has a really broad definition. But really within this context, we're talking about uh, the, uh, the more complex. So um, why do we need alternative tools? Uh, there are just some things that the methods in the HCM are not able to do. And um, over the years, we have expanded the capability of the manual to do more, the methods in the manual, especially when you look back at the 1985 HCM. But it's never been able to do everything, and it was never intended to do everything. And maybe um, when I say we, uh, those of us on the highway capacity manual that oversees uh, or the committee that oversees the manual, maybe we listened a little too much in the past about uh, people wanting to add this or that. Uh, to now that uh, uh, criticism is it does too much, it's too big, it has too much in it. How can you 
you know, how could you ever read it all? So we've been trying to find that balance, but um, still won't do everything. And uh, some of the applications, uh, maybe many of you have, have had this experience, you have a real world study and the methods in the manual just don't fit. You just can't make it work. So um, some of these, uh, there are need for other tools that'll do what the HCM cannot. Uh, maybe you simply can't get the data to compute the HCM based performance measures, uh, but you can use simulation as a proxy for that. So sometimes uh, there's uh, other reasons for using simulation uh, more than just the, the scope of what's needed. Of course, there are some inherent differences between methods in the HCM and simulation models. Uh, the HCM methods are deterministic. Uh, basically, it means uh, you'll get the same answer with all the inputs every time. There's no randomness in it. Uh, and that's the intent. In uh, micro simulation, uh, these are stochastic. They incorporate the randomness that happens from one day to the next. You may collect traffic data on two days uh, within a week, and they both may be determined to be typical days, and yet uh, you don't get the same results because there's an inherent variability and even an uncertainty uh, that is within that. So simulation really attempts to uh, mimic that randomness by including that variability, typically with random number seeds. And um, Transmodeler, which is Caliper's simulation software, does just that. All of your simulation models are gonna be stochastic in nature. Between the HCM or, or any other deterministic tool, uh, and there are a number of software packages that implement the HCM methods. Uh, when you compare those to microsimulation, they just handle things in different ways. And this is just a list. I won't go through all of it. Uh, interestingly, one of the issues that we have argued and debated with over about for years has been right turns on red. Uh, the method in the uh, the HCM essentially just subtracts those from the demand and it treats those as though they, they don't exist at all. It's really been one of the, the weaknesses in the method, um, in my opinion. Uh, certainly they are incorporated in simulation models. Uh, the way that delay at an intersection is computed is, is done differently. In the HCM, there are three different terms including uh, the one term that deals with oversaturation where the demand gets carried over um, to the next analysis period. Uh, for actuated signal control, uh, in the HCM, you may be doing an intersection analysis and you may put in uh, a minimum and a maximum green time, but the method basically converts that to an average phase duration and treats that as though it were a pre-timed phase. Uh, with a representative average duration. So uh, there are differences in how the HCM methods do it and how microsimulation does it. Uh, chapter six in the HCM gives some guidance on, you know, when might want you to, when might you want to consider using alternative tools. And I just listed a few examples uh, based on my own experience from being a practitioner for so many years. You know, if you get a, a downtown street grid, you know, within the HCM, at most, you're only gonna be able to um, do an analysis for, for one arterial. And if, if you're on a grid, you know, everything is a, a cross street to maybe an intersection along your arterial, but at most you can only look at, at one arterial at a time instead of an entire downtown area network. Uh, within the HCM, you really need to be aware of when you may have oversaturation and deal with that properly by doing a multi-period analysis uh, so that you account for that portion of the demand that doesn't get served in one period and gets carried over to the next. Simulation inherently accounts for that. Uh, with the HCM methodology, you have to account for it or you will uh, grossly underestimate delay. Uh, where routing may be part of the problem if you have congestion on a network. The HCM basically just, uh, the demand is an input and if there's a, a route choice involved, you have to do that manually as the analyst. 
Uh, if you are only recently have we uh, generated research that will go beyond the facility and really look at uh, interactions between, for example, a freeway and an arterial and the ramp connecting the two of those. We finally have a system or a, a research project in a chapter that will address that, but um, the committee has not voted on it yet. So uh, that's going to be happening. Unfortunately, we're not going to have a, an in-person January meeting because uh, we probably were going to make a decision on it at that time. But uh, ultimately, we'll have a chapter in the manual and uh, software to go along with that. And then I'm going to give you one particular example of um, if you have an active rail crossing, how you just cannot address that using the VHCM method at all. And then other things like ramp metering. Uh, you know, it, it, at best, you would only be able to grossly account for those using the HCM, so you may need something. You may need to use simulation. So here's one real world example that I have. Uh, this is an actual project in West Virginia, outside of Charleston. And if you look at the, uh, the arterial on the top half of the screen, you could do an analysis of those four intersections uh, using the HCM methodology and, and, and do it accurately. Uh, down at the bottom, if you look at the road that goes from north to south, it, uh, it, it makes kind of a jog uh, when it crosses another street. And, uh, and so there's an interaction between those two intersections and further complicating it, there's an active rail line. And you can see that just to the north. So, um, and if you look at the, the inset box, that's the approach as you're headed southbound. So you have, um, if you're going from north to south, you know, you get to this intersection, you make a left and then a right to continue along that, but you may be interrupted by a train. And this would typically, uh, one to two times during every morning and afternoon peak hour, you have an active train crossing. There's no way you can account for that using, using the methodology in the HCM. So you would have to use simulation if you were wanting to um, account for the overall average delay during uh, the morning or the afternoon peak period. So um, up until just uh, the last, about a year and a half ago, within the highway capacity software, you could animate your HCS file using CoreSim. And you can still do that, but uh, Caliper and McTrans um, have uh, come together and developed a, uh, a way to use Transmodeler now to simulate your HCS file. And currently you can do that in, um, for streets. So whether it's a one signalized intersection or a multiple ones in a streets file, you can do that now. And I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. We have added the capability to do that with freeway facilities and uh, stop controlled intersections here. And that's going to be happening in Transmodeler 6.0. Um, the current version of Transmodeler is 5.0. And uh, we envision releasing version six, this new release, either at the end of this month or sometime in September. That's our plan right now. Um, there are two, just quickly, there are two versions of Transmodeler. There's the full Transmodeler and then Transmodeler SE which you can think of as a light version. It's a light version that is still very powerful. Uh, it'll do about 85% of what you can do in the full transmodeler. And we've been making transmodeler SE. Uh, been, uh, you can get a, a courtesy copy of it for a year if you are a registered HCS user. So you can actually um, get your complimentary copy, be active for a year that you can use to actually test out what we're doing. Now, it doesn't just, uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave this uh, just for a moment, leave my contact information there if you want more information, but um, I wanna go on and just demonstrate to you just quickly how this happens. And let me uh, go back and um, share the right thing with you. So so can everybody see uh, 
the ACS screen that I have up? Yes. Okay. So this is an actual project. I've got it in visual mode so that you can see that this is an arterial that has seven intersections. And not only that, but it, it is a multi-period analysis. So it's a three hour analysis uh, divided up into 15 minute intervals. And if you are congested and you're analyzing this project in HCS, this is what you need to do. You need to do a multi-period analysis. Uh, now, if I want to simulate this, all I need to do, I can either, uh, if you look here, there's a quick animation button. It's got a little transmodeler logo, or I can simply go to file, transmodeler, view animation. And what it's gonna do, okay. So basically this, we've taken this HCS file and we've passed it into transmodeler to do um, the animation. And you can see here that uh, we're, we're, it goes straight into the, the animation part of it. Now, this is not just an animator. Uh, it creates an entire transmodeler data set uh, of your HCS file. It, it's not 100% it's not perfect. Um, you know, I, I do need to, for example, I may need to uh, clean up the, the geometry a little bit where I can maybe want to go in here and, um, you know, kind of like take out this, this notch a little bit, you know, I, I can do these types of adjustments, but um, th this gives you a pretty good representation of the HCS file that you had. Now, Transmonitor is built on a, a GIS. Uh, it is a GIS. And so it has the ability to spatially locate your HCS file. So you can actually put this on a map. Uh, it's an extra step and you have to do it from within Transmodeler, but you can import it into Transmodeler and basically pin it on a map, uh, on a, a real place on the globe. So uh, it has that capability. But anyway, uh, we, we view, uh, we being McTrans and Caliper, we, view this as a suite of tools. And um, even though we are two different organizations, companies work, we're working together. Uh, some of the things that are global parameters in HCS, like percentage of trucks and that kind of thing, we make some assumptions as we pass those into Transmodeler. But uh, we've worked hard to get this to happen. And as I said, we are are adding features to it, the ability to, to do more types of analysis with, with future versions of, uh, of Transmodeler. It's already there in HCS 7.9, which has been released and we're working hard to get Transmodeler 6 out the door. Um, I have tested the, uh, the example problems that come with HCS for freeway facilities and the stop controlled intersections. And they do um, with the one button click simulating transmodeler. So um, we're getting on the, with some final testing of the software and hope to get that out soon. That's pretty much um, what I had. I didn't have anybody interrupt me. So I guess um, no questions at this point.